Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Flansu and today, or the other day, Leaf put out this beautiful Pure His mod which made me feel like my childhood memories and they just perfect in here so I thought what was the best thing about horses in the summer riding in the forest so I built a nice little forest to ride in and of course also we need it over here i'm sorry for the blurriness we need a, a nice little it's not a stable but we have a nice little horse pin in here and we have a nice little riding range over here and i really enjoyed building it and i really hope you will enjoy watching how i built it and if you want to see that or simply just learn a little more about the your hist of your Pause, uh, then please keep watching. Okay, guys, and we are of course talking about the fuel horse today, but we are also talking about the domesticated horse, especially because it's something we really haven't talked about that much on my channel. And it is a animal that have been through a big evolution over time, even though it's technically still is just a horse, and it's technically still is very close related to a lot of its family members. The past of the horse can be dated all the way back like 45 to 55 million years ago. Back then they looked a little bit different. They were much smaller and they had multiple toes compared to today where they are hoofed and hoofed animals are of course uh, animals that have this single to, to walk on and therefore they of course had a long time before they actually were real, uh, important in any capacity for us humans again i don't even think we were around back then but four thousand years before christ we as humans began domesticating it domestication again doesn't mean animal in captivity that is simply a captivated animal or animal in captivity. This is a domesticated animal, which means that we have bred it purposefully, sometimes to get different races. We see this a lot with the uh, different kind of pet animals, but the horse really wasn't a pet as first. It was the worker. And all the way back 4,000 years before Christ, we didn't really need a fluffy animal to look pretty or to pet or anything like that i do admit i love my cats very much i love dogs i love all animals pretty much but back then it was a little more purposeful you could have a lot of work out of a horse it could plow your field it could keep up with the, the family or you could keep better in touch with the family after they actually left the home uh, since you could actually go visit them over bigger distances this also led to both riding and uh, what's it called uh, wagons they could draw and even though this was quite useful they really wasn't that useful yet since the most people would choose a cow over a horse any day since a horse sorry a cow could still draw your wagons but it could also feed you both with milk and produce offspring you could eat. Yes, you also ate horses, but horses are longer to reproduce than cow. A single month longer, but it still counts when you're starving. And furthermore, of course, you also had the fact that you didn't get milk out of the horse. Though it took a while before this gimmick of getting a horse got all the way around the world, Though it is believed that already a thousand years later, which is three thousand years before Christ, that uh, it was a quite normal thing to domesticate uh, or at least try. Again, domestication is not something you do over one generation. It takes thousands of years to actually domesticate an animal, but it started here and it was more normal to catch these horses and try to use them in the daily work basically when we look at the family tree of the horse we of course have some individuals we counted on to be there uh, wild living horses um zebras 
donkeys, asses, uh, and so on. But if we go up and look at the order, we have 55 species here in the Perisodatula order, which is an order of odd toad. Sorry, odd toad ungulates. Uh, which is big mammals which a odd number of dominant toes yeah it's a really really weird thing to order animals after but it does make sense when you look at it it can for instance be one toed animal again here we have the horse of course uh, since the hoof is technically one big toe but it's also animals that have three dominant toes, which could for instance be the tapir and the rhinoceros. Though the rhinoceros actually have four dominant toes on the front, but only three dominant toes on the back, therefore odd toed. But zooming in on the family, we are looking at the Equidae, which is the family of one toed animals. Here, of course, we have the horses, the donkeys, the zebras, uh, and a few others, the guaga, the, um, what's it called, Swalski's wild horse, of course, the onaga, the tapan, uh, the asses, more zebras, uh, hyang, uh, and so on. So these very much riding ready looking animals like or pack animals uh, that we know them more as but then i thought for sure we have to look at the subfamily because there must be a subfamily with the closest relations which of course would be the domesticated horse the spurswalski wild horse maybe a donkey but the zebra and some of the others must be further removed surely uh, that's not what happens. <laughs> uh, they are all the 33 species we have in this family have the same genus and therefore there are no subfamily under this family. The genus is Equus, I think it's pronounced, and therefore of course all of the donkeys, all of the asses, all of the zebras, all of the horses have the Latin names starting with Equus. Which in this case also showed that, again, all of these animals are equally close related, even though the domesticated horse have been stated some places to be the father of the, sorry, the domesticated horse have been a sub uh, species of the Przewalski's wild horse, or the Przewalski's wild horse be the father of the domesticated horse. Here it shows they are equally related, so they are just as close to any other uh, of these family members. And this gives the domesticated horse the Equus ferus cabalus. Though I will just mention this is not only the domesticated horse as we know it today, since we actually have some domesticated horses over time that have been reintroduced to the wild which will be called feral uh, horses these are not technically wild horses uh, which explains something i have talked a lot about earlier because the um Perswatsky's wild horse is the only truly wild horse i did question that because i know we set out uh, horses in denmark to have wild horses but they are of course not Przewalski's wild horses and not wild horses at all. They are simply feral domesticated horses that have been re-released. And it does look really weird that for 6,000 years we have domesticated the horse. We have changed their manner. We have affected how their genes have advanced and so on. Only to put it back in the wild, but it does actually make sense. We do the same with cows and sheep, right? Like a single kilometers from where I live, we have a forest where we have cows going, and this is the same species as you use as milk cows that 
we just put out there and it's because it's so healthy for the environment we do not in denmark have natural big grasses a lot so therefore they will have a help keep down some vegetation helping others to grow and then fertilize it all uh, again we do not have any big predators as such we just got the wolf back a few years ago but their numbers are very low so it's not like we're putting the horses or the cows or the sheep out just to die they have a fair chance and we have someone keeping an eye on them been some issues of course but they are thriving most of the places is being done and they have been removed some places where it didn't work anyway to release horses is really not the only reason we have them today today horses are really useful for a lot of stuff but mainly for funner purposes they are of course still used to uh, draw wagons i know specifically the fjordhills we used in um, i don't know if i mentioned this i used to volunteer as a living museum where we went it was around the 1940s to 60s out there and we have a wagon drawn by these beautiful fjord horses i also been, uh, actually tried to uh, go with a plow like plowing the field with two of these i also tried it with shias i must confess it is a little more special doing it with shias because they are just so massive and it's they, they just do it faster. They are just stronger than the Fjordhest. But the Fjordhest just have a, a really good manner to work with, basically. And they're really relaxed. No matter if you have them for a wagon or if you simply want a horse to go out on your backfield, just have a little old horse going out there having fun. Though we have the rules that you need to have someone else keeping it um, happy and give it a friend so you cannot in denmark have a horse all on its own um but it i think it's allowed if you have like a donkey or a zebra or something closely related to it earlier the rule was just one other animal in the barn but then you could just simply have a rabbit or a cat that doesn't work anymore <laughs> then we of course have all of the different riding categories and i do not know how what they all called in english but i am impressed by some of these things you can get a horse to do uh, on command basically uh, and no matter if you ride like jump with your horse or you ride like fast a uh, jogging what is it called uh, or dress dressure? i'm not sure how to pronounce it in english sorry uh you have a really special working relationship with these horses, which I can only admire. Another horse that's actually quite famous here in Denmark is the Brugger horse, the Carlsberg horse, or simply Jyden, which is technically very close related, the same horse. It was, of course, originally called Jyden, but it almost died out. We didn't have enough genetic material of them to keep them um like purebreds in denmark anymore and they were pretty much only here so carlsberg and if you know carlsberg it's a beer company they wanted back in the 1900s they wanted a horse to symbolize their beer to draw the big beer wagon around in Copenhagen and other big cities around the world so they chose to buy up almost all of the rest of these horses and find some new blood from uh, other countries that was not these horses technically uh, but all of their um, body types and their manners and the genetic were so close so you actually conceded to maybe not save the same species but at least create a new uh, and they are still uh, Carlsberg still have some horses today um, it is a really big, strong horse. They are quite beautiful, I must say. Um, they do not use them every day to, like, uh, vans and, uh, what's they call trucks, uh, drive beers around much faster than these horses can. But they still have them for special occasion, and they have a Carlsberg Museum, 
where you also can go and see this whole species that they actually saved. I will just add that they did when they started getting the numbers up, they also sold a lot. So you can actually find them both in Denmark and out of Denmark, a lot of places nowadays. Uh, so they are completely safe. We shouldn't be afraid that when Carlsberg don't want them anymore, they're gonna die out. Nope, they are safe. A thing you may not think about is actually we have a therapist horses. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a every country thing, but we have here in Denmark, where people with specific illnesses can get help by horses. Uh, sometimes it's simply just actually go and pet the horse that helps uh, people with specific issues, but also the fact that it can strengthen the core and the lower back. Uh, my doctor actually in uh, did, uh, what's it called? Uh, tell me at some point that it would help my low back i have low back issues uh to simply get that uh, soft massage if you start jumping riding fast or anything like that it will not work but this simply just let the horse walk around slowly that kind of bend you get in your lower back actually can help a lot both with your lower back and your core so that's actually also a quite wonderful thing to figure out about these beautiful animals and because of all of these different purposes the horses can have we of course have a large variety of different breeds nowadays they come in different sizes. We have the largest Shire to the very small Farabella, but they also come in different shapes. These shapes are more like we have the thicker ones, the thinner ones, but we also have different shapes based on different things we need them for. Again, we have the workhorse that if this small beast, they are for instance to dr uh, drag a wagon, uh, pull a paw, or something historically um which have these more much more muscle looking horses uh, some of them have a little bit more fur some of them are more uh, agile on gra different layers of ground like they are very stable in their feet and then we have the more well-knowing riding horses which would be again these more at not necessarily agile because the workhorses will be more agile of different terrain, but the uh, riding horses will be more agile on straight terrain, most of them. They are, again, we have different species that are better to some riding forms than others. Again, we have uh, Western riding forms and we have, I'm not sure what they are, the other is called, um, but within that you still have different times uh types of competitions which again affect which uh, horse you would choose they also come in a variety of colors some breeds have only a few colors or only one color and some breeds have pretty much every single color pattern and so on that you can imagine which just make the world of horses even more entertaining if you ask me and some uh, breeds of horse can even have a difference within its own uh, breed of how they are built. For instance, the Fjordhest, which we're talking uh, or looking at here, uh, or the Fjord horse, I'm guessing it's called. I'm uh, not sure if in English it's just Fjord or if it's Fjord horse. Um, but it's this beautiful one I am talking about. It actually comes in two variations, which is one is the more uh, historically correct, uh, which is what you nowadays would call a um, bull horse in Danish. I'm not sure how else to uh, translate that. But it is this more muscly uh, variation. They are normally a bit shorter. Uh, much more muscle in the leg and especially the chest you can see is more beefy they have been bred through generations specifically for again dragging objects and be very strong in the chest where they would have their main pole area and of course their legs to stand firm and strong 
then you actually can see the other variation, which is more riding uh, theme. It would historically be more like the uh, historical correct the workhorse, but because it already were a workhorse, and if you had a farm, you only could have form, uh, afford one horse. You would over time start using your workhorse also as a riding horse. And if you at some point could afford to have both, then you could actually breed for both of those purposes. Therefore, nowadays you can find breeders of the Fjordes that have horses with uh, less muscle basically they have a little bit slender frame um and then of course don't even have the same uh, muscle at all that's the biggest part between it of course muscles can be trained but they just don't naturally have the same gusto about it therefore nowadays people who still have these uh, historical wagons for instance for museums or uh, things like that they need to be uh, very much aware if they want these horses for uh, this purpose of pulling something heavy they need to be aware where they get them from because not everyone breed them for that purpose and if it's been like six or seven generations since any of the its family members actually have been bred for these purposes then it may not be able to uh, take the toll in the long run but no matter if you want the one or the other variation of them they are still extremely recognizable they all have basically the same color some are lighter some are darker but they basically all have this beautiful tan color and the lighter belly part underneath it's not like very tan and very like white underneath but it's just a light tan color and then a little bit lighter belly part and inner legs then they have the uh, not white but quite light mane and tail that have this stripe of black i did go a little bit into it on my video on the mud specifically but they have this you can actually also see it here uh black in the middle of the mane uh that goes it isn't the front of the mane, you ha you know, the mane go upwards on these short hair uh, down the uh, neck, but on top between the ears, that tuff up there will not have the line of black all the way through, it will stop between the ears. So basically when the hair falls down on the face, the bottom part will still be white, or sorry not white, but light. Uh, the side parts will be light and then you will have the black uh, on top in the middle falling down. The black line will go all the way down through the mane and continue. It doesn't do that on this mud, but it continues all the way to the tail. And again on the tail, it stops in the middle of the tail. So the black hairs will be in the middle on top falling down over on the side it will be the light color and underneath it will also be the light color which i do believe the <laughs> fjordist is the only horse out there with this exact pattern until now most of the information i've given you are either from animalia which i normally use or my uh, knowledge i got from my time uh, working at a museum uh, combined with uh, breeders and keepers and owners of your hist uh, overall but I did search for uh, a little more like uh, older information with this specific horse and I found a article on Duodico it will be listed in the description below as I always do with my informations uh, but the thing is though it's Danish so I'm not sure you can read it um, but they actually state that the Fjordhest, again, this beautiful horse, uh, actually is dated all the way down to the Viking Age. And the first one there ever were written stories about were Sleipner. If you are history buff, you already know where I'm going with this. But Sleipner were Odin's horse. Yes, the god Odin. Uh, his horse, it were had eight legs. And here it's described 
as the small yellow horse um, but as far as I remember personally I'm pretty sure I've seen places where it stated it's, uh, that Sleipner were black and therefore clearly not a fjordhist but no matter what you think about that story it did originate in Norway and later became very famous both in Denmark, Sweden and other around lane countries i know it have been sold to multiple countries around the world that doesn't mean that it necessarily is usual everywhere around the world but with modern transportation and how available these horses are nowadays and how beloved they are i'm pretty sure that if you really want one you can get one if you have the money
okay guys that's all i got for you today and as always you know the drill like subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time i upload a video i will hope to see you again either in the comments below or in the next video bye guys <laughs>